Now, chronic poverty, unemployment and decades of war have left Somalia with one of the highest rates of mental illness in the world. The United Nations estimates that one in three people there suffer from some form of psychological problem. But treatment is virtually non-existent, with hundreds of thousands of people simply locked away, becoming social pariahs. On the eve of World Mental Health Day, our Africa reporter Jamal Osman travelled to Somalia to investigate. In Somali, we'd call him Ninkawala, the man who is mad. Imagine being severely mentally ill. Then imagine being chained up like an animal 24 hours a day by your own family. This is how Abdullahi has spent the last 17 years of his life. Mental illness. The thing actors pretend to have in order to win Oscars. Now, in real life, Mental health can be something of a touchy topic. We don't like to talk about it much. And as one psychiatrist explains, when we do, we don't talk about it well. Stigma still is a very big issue. Uh, it manifests itself in the ways that we think and talk about the, the mentally ill and in the, the terms, the words that we use to describe them. For instance? Wacko, psycho, cray cray. I would like you to explain for um, people who are new to this issue and just new to this terminology in general, what is the MAD movement? The MAD movement is, um, well, okay, maybe let's break down the, the words. Yeah, um, I think that there's a lot of stigmatization when it comes to mental health and people with mental health issues. Um, and that can range from mild issues to, or I guess mild illnesses to severe illnesses, and there's a lot of, a lot of the public is, I guess, a little weary or afraid of people with these sort of, uh, I guess, health issues. Um, and I guess MAD, the word M-A-D, um, helps to say that it, it's a reclamation of the word, right, because MAD is generally a term that's um, a little bit offensive and it's just to reclaim it uh, so it, it's a combination of people with psychiatric illnesses um, mental health consumers um, and it's to say that people with mental health issues are I guess not as we, we are all the same, basically. Um, we are, we may have mental health issues, but we are not, um, I guess, we are not uh, disabled, or we are not uh, any way better or worse than the quote unquote normal person. Tell me a little bit about your organization and what it does slash hopes to achieve. Um, so Mad Student Society was created in, if I remember correctly, 2007 by Lucy Costa. I suppose she created it because she wanted to create a community of people with uh, mad mental health issues, wanted to create a community for people who want to help others with the same issues, to network, perhaps didn't exist or were not, I guess, to our liking, I suppose.
Hi, my name is Sarah, and this is my experience with madness and mental health. So, I've always had a more personal and intimate understanding of it, because my mom has bipolar disorder, so I got to see a side of it that most people didn't, and it was that much more real to me. But I also never really thought it would impact me on the level that it has. And I never thought I would ever be diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I first encountered the Mad Student Society about three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. I was in third year. Um, through my friend Shauna. I was supposed to hang out with her that day and there was a meeting going on, I guess. And then, I don't know if it was an actual like organized hangout, but people hung out afterwards. So she invited me to come along because she thought I'd enjoy it and it'd be a good environment for me to talk about my issues. So I went and it was such a positive experience. I've never felt more accepted by a random group of people in my life. I always remember we went to the undergrad after the support meeting to hang out and I think we we're talking about our diagnosis. The majority of the people there, they had bipolar disorder they had type 1 and I have type 2 and one of the guys he made a stupid comment saying like oh, type 1 is like the real kind normally that probably would have you know, bugged me but I was depressed and irrational so I just started crying I never should have told you I never should have let you see inside Don't want any trouble in your mind Won't you let it be? I never should have told you I never should have let you see inside Don't want any trouble in your mind Won't you let it be? I never should have told you I never should have let you see inside Don't want any trouble in your mind Won't you let it be? I never should have told you I never should have let you see inside Don't want any trouble in your mind Won't you let it be? And normally that's kind of like social suicide If it was a different circumstance everyone would just be like What are you doing? <laughs> or are you okay? But in a somewhat judgy manner but for them, they were so accepting and they gave the person who said the comment a hard time and he was very apologetic and like genuine and they sympathized with me. It's also about the language, being critical of the language uh, you use. I don't think language is something that most people think about critically. They just use it and that's about it. They, they don't really know that, you know, there's probably a more appropriate word for certain things. Everything about you screams normal. That you're screaming and screams normal. It's not true, Lux. Oh yeah? Tell me one thing about you that is not normal. My mom's bipolar. Like I get in that hospital's bipolar. Sometimes I get afraid that I'll turn out like her, too. I'm sorry. I'm not telling you to be sorry. I'm just telling you because everyone has stuff no one can see. 